Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at elimination of unrealized gain or losses on depreciable asset. This is part four of five. In this session, we're going to look at the partial equity as well as the complete equity method. I'm going to do it at the same time because they are similar to each other. So I'm not going to do a whole example for the complete because I can cover it with the partial. This topic is covered in advanced accounting and obviously it's covered on the CPA on the CPA exam. Um, before we start, I would like to let you know that I would like to connect with my viewers. That's you, my subscribers. Um, please connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm very active on LinkedIn. I, I don't only post videos on LinkedIn. I also post other related articles and news about the CPA industry. If you're an accounting student, you will benefit tremendously. I also have a Facebook page accounting lectures please like my Facebook page if you're a Facebook user and obviously you want to subscribe to my YouTube because this is where I house all my lectures I do have a Twitter account not that active I should be and I do have a website and my lectures are hosted on the website but not all of them because I cannot keep updating it constantly but they're always on YouTube but through my website you can find more information about me and if you'd like to connect with me as well in this session we'll work an example uh, using the partial equity method again I'm gonna also cover the complete equity method it's an upstream sale and let's start with the example P company owns 80% of the common stock of S company the stock was purchased for 960 that's fine on January 1st 2009 when stone beginning retained earning was 675 so the beginning retained earning when we bought the company was 675 on January 1st 2011 which is we went through 09 10 and now we went through two years stone company sold fixed asset to P company for 960 so s s made a sale to P it's an upstream sale stone had purchased the asset for 1 million 350 on January 1st at which time the estimated useful life was 25 years the estimated useful life to P company on 1 1 2011 when when we bought it is also 10 years both companies imply employ the straight line method and what we're going to be giving, we're going to be giving, and we are asked to prepare the consolidated financial statement. And what we're going to be giving is the income statement for both companies, basically the income statement and the balance sheet separately for both companies, as well as the statement of retained earnings. So this is um, the income statement for P company. I would like to show you that we earned from the subsidiary 240,000. Notice right here, it's here, equity in the sub. Uh, this is the net income for P company separately. This is the net income for S company separately. This is P beginning retained earning. This is S retained earnings. This is income from above. Okay, this is P dividend. This is S dividend. This is again, their dividend separately. Then we have the inventory, the investment account. This is important. This is the investment account that we have in Shannon or S company. This is property, plant and equipment. We have common stock and obviously we have no non-controlling interest on the set the non-controlling interest appears on the consolidated so what's going to happen is the first thing is look we received income from the subsidiary two hundred and forty thousand. so do you guys remember what we do when we receive the income well i'm not received the income the uh, we recognize two hundred and forty thousand of income if you're wondering how did we come up with this well it's easy they made three three hundred thousand and we are 80 percent owner therefore that income is 240,000. so what did we do when we received this income well what not we received the income sorry i keep saying receive we did not receive the income we're going to recognize the income so we debited let me just we debited investment in s company we debited investment in s company those are journal entries 240,000, and we credited equity invest equity in equity from income equity from the inc investment basically equity equity in sub income equity in sub income 240,000 so this is what we did and as we did this this is this is already has been done this entry has been done i just want to show it to you because i'm going to reverse it i want to show you why i'm reversing this so this two hundred and forty thousand is already reflected in this number this two hundred and forty thousand is clearly showing here so it's we already did this entry then the subsidiary declared 70 seventy five thousand in dividends so they declared seventy five thousand well if they declared seventy five thousand guess what 
If they declared 75,000, guess what? 80% is ours, therefore we received 80%, not 80, 80%. So 60,000 is our share of the dividend. Therefore, what we did when, when they declared the dividend, we debited, we debited dividend declared we debited dividend declared 60,000 and we credited the investment in S company we credited the investment in S company $60,000 so this is what we did and why did we do this because we use, we're using the partial equity method the partial equity says when the company whatever the company reported in net income we increase our investment by a, by a proportionate share right there 240,000 and when they pay dividend we reduce our investment by the proportionate share which is 80% of 75,000 now the first thing we do when we consolidate so this is entry one the first one we consolidate is to reverse to reverse those entries basically uh, to take out the income the intercompany income to reverse the effect of the parent company during the year why because when we combine them we're gonna combine revenues and expenses we cannot combine revenues and expenses that also the income that we recognized already okay so we're gonna consolidate so this is this is entry one well guess what we need to debit this account we need to debit this account therefore we're gonna debit equity in sub income 240,000 now those are the consolidating entries so basically what we did is we eliminated this so I'm gonna go ahead and do so right now so I'm gonna debit 240,000 right here and notice now the consolidated amount is zero I started with 240 debited the income 240 therefore the ending balance is zero right right here zero okay right here zero now what else so I I reverse this I also need to reverse the equity the equity I debited the equity 240 I credited the equity 240 there was a net increase of 180 so it was a debit if you combine those two that's a debit of 180 what do I need to do I need to credit investment in Shannon company I'm sorry I debit I debit this to 40 and I credit investment I credit investment of 180 okay so basically I eliminated this already I eliminated this and I eliminated those two the effect of those so let me go ahead and credit this account 180 so this is my investment right here I'm gonna credit this account 180 and as I credit this account it goes down to one million two hundred fifty thousand four hundred dollars I still have to remove my dividend declared I'm gonna credit dividend declared 60,000 let me go up here and uh, dividend declared by s company right here I'm gonna credit this account 60,000 okay wait why because that's my so the next thing we're gonna do if you remember s company sold an asset to p company so s company sold the asset to p company the original cost for S company for S company was one million three hundred and fifty. The accumulated depreciation was five hundred and forty thousand. Therefore, what's going to happen is their carrying value is eight hundred and ten thousand. Eight hundred and ten thousand. Uh, this is the uh, carrying value. So, cost minus accumulated depreciation equal to the carrying value. Now, they sold this asset for nine hundred and sixty. Well. If they sold it if they have something for uh, they sold something for 960 it has a book value of 810 we have a gain of 150 so here's the gain that we reported okay so what happened when we actually sold this asset what happened on the s company books and on p company books well it's very important to go over these entries so you understand what we're gonna be doing next okay let me go back to the Excel sheet maybe and prepare those entries now remember 
remember the sale took place in 2011 January 1st 2011 notice here the sale took place January 1st 2011 so here's what the company did both of them what they did on January 1st 2011 so the parent company is gonna debit equipment they're gonna debit equipment for the price that they bought it at which is 960,000 they will credit cash 960,000 now the subsidiary the sub which is Shannon they will debit cash they received cash 960 they will credit the equipment they'll credit the equipment um, their credit the equipment 1 million 350 why did they do it for that much because that's the, that was their original cost they will debit accumulated depreciation they will debit accumulated depreciation 540 that's what they did and they credited a gain on sale gain on sale of 150,000 so this is the entry that took place this is the entry that took place when they when they sold the asset and the reason I'm, I'm going through this entry because you will see it again again and again and again so this is what happened on the sub books this is everything is happening 1 1 2011 we don't care about 1 1 2011 but I want to show you what happened now 12 31 12 31 2011 what did we do 12 31 2011 we needed to do the following we needed to eliminate this gain because it's an intercompany gain so we debited this account we debited gain on sale we debited gain on sale we needed to debit gain on sale to remove the gain the intercompany gain what we did also we debited equipment and you might be saying why did we debit equipment I'll explain it in a moment we debit equipment we debit equipment 390,000 now you might be saying why 390,000 now remember the equipment has has an original cost the original cost of the equipment is 1,350,000 so when it was on the books of the sub we had an asset worth 1,350,000 when it went to the when it went to the parent company now we have an asset for 960 okay so it was three one million three hundred and fifty now the book the the original cost went down well guess what we need to bring back the cost when we consolidate to, its, to the affiliated cost the affiliated cost is one million three hundred and fifty therefore what I do I add three hundred and ninety thousand here I'm back to one million three hundred and fifty because when I sold this I zeroed this account okay so I need to go back and when I when I report let me just fix my let me fix this because you can barely see what I did let me just fix these uh, okay, fix the pen one moment please so what happened is this on we had the asset on the sub so this is the equipment on the sub was one million three hundred and fifty then this equipment was sold to the parent company this is the same equipment and we sold it for uh, 960 and what did we do we removed the asset from here made this asset go down to zero and now we have the asset at one mil at 960 but what we need to do we need to go back and bring the asset back to its original price therefore original cost therefore we need to debit this account 360 to go back to 1 million 350 1,350,000 okay that's so that's the debit for the equipment 1,300,000 and uh, this is the debit equipment so we are done with the gain we remove the gain we put the asset back on the books for 1,350,000 by debiting the asset then we need to re-establish the depreciation and accumulated depreciation need to be put back on the books 540,000 so this is what we did 12 31 2011 and we need to repeat this entry every year until the asset is sold because once we consolidate 
we need to remove the gain we need to remove we need to put back the asset on the books at the original cost and we need to restore the accumulated depreciation now year two when we go to 2012 what's going to happen the gain will be gone therefore what we're going to be debiting is the retaining retained earning of the parent company and the NCI rather than the gain because the gain is gone. So in case you're wondering, where did the gain go? Well, in 2012, the gain is gone. So that's one thing we have to do. So let me go back here and so this is the first entry. The second entry is this. This is the second entry and this is the gain. I told you 150, but now we are dealing with 2012. We are dealing with 2012. Okay. Now, our our depreciation based on the original cost was 81,000 that's this is the initial depreciation now the depreciation for the new company is 96,000 so what happened is depreciation went up by 15,000 what's going to happen is this we have to reverse this depreciation we have to reduce the depreciation and as we reduce the depreciation we are going to have what we call gain realization through the usage of the asset so what's going to happen is we're going to have to do the following we're going to have to debit accumulated depreciation credit depreciation expense fifteen thousand. so this is what we need to do and this, we did this for 12 31 2011 so for 12 31 2011 we made this entry we debited accumulated depreciation credit depreciation expense to recognize some of that gain because the gain is 150 now we're gonna re we're realizing 15,000 out of this gain now guess what we have to do the same thing for 2012 so for 2012 Remember, we have it for 2011, and we also have to do it for 2012. For, 20, for 2012, we have to do the same thing. We have to make the same entry. In addition to the same entry, we have to go back and, uh, uh, and we have to rebook the 2011 entry because the work papers, they're not part of each individual company. So we have to go back and book another accumulated depreciation, 15,000. Okay, this is, then we're going to credit retained earning. We can no longer credit depreciation expense and credit NCI. This is for 12,000 and this is for 3,000. Now, why did we do this? This is for 2012 to recognize the gain from the 2012 depreciation. Okay, now can we combine those two entries? Sure, we can. Accumulated depreciation, accumulated depreciation. So I'm going to show you the combined entry. So the combined entry would look something like this for 2012. The combined entry, we debit accumulated depreciation, 30,000, 15,000 for this year, 15,000 for this year, and 12,000 and 3,000 for the prior year. Now, I forgot to tell you, uh, I forgot to mention something because I said I'm going to do this. If we're using the complete equity method, we would have credit debited investment for using the complete equity method. We would not debit retained earnings. If we are using the complete equity method, we would have debited investment. I'm sorry, credited investment in this situation rather than retained earnings. Okay. And what I suggest we do, let's go to the uh, work papers and start to plug in all these numbers so we can update our working papers. So you see what's going on. Okay. Let's go up here and let's debit equipment. So we need to debit. Remember, we had to debit equipment, increase equipment by 390,000 to make sure our equipment is uh, is up to date we need to debit the retained earnings of the parent company the retained earnings of the parent company needs to be debited 12 100 and uh, 100 uh, how much is it yes debited retained earning 120,000 we need to debit controlling non-controlling interest because the gain some of it went to non-controlling interest we need to debit non-controlling interest 30,000 and we need to credit accumulated depreciation credit accumulated depreciation 540,000 this is this was entry 2 for entry 3 we need to debit accumulated depreciation 30,000 we need to credit other expenses here up here we need to credit other expenses 15,000 we need to credit beginning retained earnings 12,000 
and we need to credit non-controlling interest non-controlling interest three three thousand okay so what's left is now what we need to do we need to remove the uh, we need to remove the uh, investment account basically at the end basically we did all the consolidation on the excel sheet everything should be working the last thing we need to do is we need to remove the investment we need to remove the investment account and and remove the uh, uh, equity of the s company so we need to remove the equity of s company which is the beginning retained earning of s company need to be gone because we only use the equity of the sub we need to remove the common stock of the sub because the only common stock we're going to have is the parent company so let's do this so i'm going to come up here remove the remove the um equity of the sub i'm going to credit the equity of i'm sorry debit the equity of the sub debit the equity of the sub 525 I'm gonna debit retained earning of the sub because the only retained earning is the retained earning of the parent company, one million thirty-eight thousand. I'm gonna have to remove now the investment account and the investment account right now. Notice it's one million two hundred fifty thousand four hundred dollars. I'm gonna have to remove that and I'm gonna have to debit this one million two hundred fifty thousand four hundred because I need oops. I need to remove this account. Uh, I, need to, I need to credit the account, not debit. Credit the account right here, one million two hundred fifty thousand four hundred dollars. So I remove this account, and the only thing I need to do now is to reestablish my uh, my non-controlling interest. So let's go back and show you how do we reestablish the non-controlling interest. So there we go so we remove the retained earnings because we don't we the, the retained earnings of the sub doesn't appear on the parent uh, on the consolidated we remove the, the common stock of the sub we remove the investment account and the only thing is left is the non-controlling interest of the company and the non-controlling interest of the company is the beginning retained earning so this is retained earning one one minus the retained earning that we started with started with means at the beginning of the when we purchased this company the beginning retained earnings for the life of this company when we bought it was 675 therefore we'll take the difference between those two we multiply it by 20 percent then we'll add this year income of 240,000. therefore non-controlling interest should be three hundred twelve thousand six hundred dollars okay so now what's left is go back to the uh go back and let's put the on the excel sheet update the excel sheet so on the excel sheet the ending retained earning the uh, the, re, the we credit retained earnings we're going to credit retain i'm sorry not retained earning non-controlling interest 312 600 okay so let's go up and start to make sure our consolidation is correct uh, revenue of the sub plus revenue of the uh, parent company there is no adjustment to this revenue this is all from the outsider total revenue three million three hundred thousand revenue from the sub is eliminated this is total revenue for both a cost of goods sold of the parent plus the cost of the goods sold of the sub other expenses of the parent plus other expenses of the sub minus the fifteen thousand that's going to give us 360. so the total expenses is uh, two million uh, two million six hundred and eleven uh, two million six hundred and ten thousand dollar uh the uh, net income consolidated income is 690 but remember we have to back out we have to back out the non-controlling interest income remember the non control is non-controlling interest income will have to be backed out okay so how much does the uh, how much does the uh, non-controlling interest uh, has well guess what they have income of 300,000 they generated income of 300,000 plus we have to add back the depreciation of 15,000 and they're gonna get 20% of that and times 0.2 let me do it again so they're gonna the 315,000 which is 300,000 let me just show you what these numbers are coming from 300,000 plus plus 15,000 which is the depreciation that we backed out times times 0 
and that's 63,000. Therefore, consolidated net income is 627. The parent retained earnings started at 1,505,000. Uh, we debited this account 120. We credited this account 12,000. And this is the ending, the ending, um, the ending retained earnings. The ending retained earnings. Stone Company retained earnings should not appear because the only retained earnings will appear on the consolidated as the parent parent company. Income from above. Obviously, this is income from above. Income from above. From above. Those numbers are coming from above. Okay. So. Beginning retained earnings, I'm sorry, uh, beginning retained earnings plus income that's coming from above, 627, minus the dividend. Remember, the dividend of only the parent company appears on the consolidated gives us ending retained earnings. And notice here the dividend of the sub, 60,000 was canceled and 15,000 is going to the, to the non-controlling interest. That's why between the non-controlling interest and the one that we eliminate, it, it keeps nothing for the consolidated. So notice here. So income from above for the non-controlling interest is 63,000 minus the dividend gives us non-controlling interest for now for 48,000. On the balance sheet, we, we combine the assets, inventory plus sub plus the parent, investment and Shannon should be zero and I showed you how we did this. Plant and equipment, we started with the parent plus the sub plus the adjustment of 390, this is the ending property, plan, and equipment, accumulated depreciation, parent plus sub, minus the debit plus the credit gives us the ending retained earnings. So this is the total assets and hopefully equity will equal to that. Liabilities and equity. We have two liabilities. We combine them. No adjustment to liabilities. The P company common stock will appear on the, on the consolidated. S company common stock does not appear. It's zero. Retained earning of only the parent company of only yeah, the parent company which already computed 1,874,000 and the non-controlling interest is 333,660 which is 312,600 plus 3,000 minus 30 will give us 300, $333,600 which is which makes total assets equal to liabilities and equity which is it means we did this hopefully we did this properly if you have any questions any comments by all means email me and i showed you here what we need to do if there was a complete method now if you're studying for the cpa exam you will not be receiving a complete consolidation on the exam but if you understand this you'll be in good shape for the cpa exam if you have any questions email me please if you visit my website consider donating money for the website study hard for the exam it's worth it